live? It's live. No. It's it's a no. little it's a little homemade, but it's live, Is and we it made really? it. We did it. It's it, we're a few minutes late, oh but we did it. Oh my gosh, Tony! I, you know what? I mean, the sweat. We could actually film the glistening sweat on the back it's, of my neck. It's working now. It's working. We did it. We're we, back. We are live. We're here. We're here. We're here. It's Friday. We did it. Jason alone is here. Oh my gosh. Phoenix yeah. James is here. Oh my gosh. Original Garg. Like everybody, you guys are here. The, and we're, we're here. here. Yeah. And you just got a thing. What Let do me I get? see. I don't know. Look at your thing. What am I looking at? It's trying to add you so you can actually be on camera with me. Oh, really? It said. I don't know. I'm trying. Oh, well, okay. Let's see if I we can do it. Should I put in a request? I don't know. It should be like it's trying to do it. I don't know. I'm just, I'm doing so many thumbs up and hearts right now. Oh my gosh, you guys made it. We did it. We're drawn to fantasy. Woof. I'm Tony D with Angela D. Ange D. Ange D. We did it, guys. Um, if you could have seen um, the last 15, 20 minutes of me going, why isn't this loading? My Facebook on my phone, I guess it was some kind of update on Facebook. Anyway, my phone did not like that at all. And so um, it threw my entire setup off. So I'm completely not prepared um, uh, as I normally would be. But we're going to do it. It's all fine. We'll, we're awesome. going to have a great time and it's Friday. And uh, I was going to reveal this, but I realized I hadn't printed out my title card. And so here it is. Uh, one of the big things I was excited to show you guys today, amongst many other things, right, Ange? Yes. A lot true. of things. We're going to try to do a little bit of drawing. Uh, so much to show. I kind of feel like I, need, I just want to show the love, Ange. Should we show the love? I okay. kind of like to show the love. Already? Okay. I feel like let's show the love. I think people okay. will. I was told on. Let me put on my, um, I think. Here's the studio. It's a mess. There's the, look, for once, the dogs, look, Mimi's ready. Like, Pippin's sleeping. He's not even, hey, hey guys, you're not going to wrestle? Like, this is it. This is what you normally do. Look, now, of course, when I go to draw, they'll start, and I'll tell you guys the secret of art. Guess what? That's when they're going to start going nuts. I wanted to set this up for you guys. This is the love fest that we have received over the last month or so. Um, hopefully, some of you guys got um, some amazing... Um, T-shirts or these tote bags that Rebecca Thurnberg made. They are unbelievable. She gave extras, so I think, Angie, we should definitely add Wait, it to on, the jump pot. hold on. Let me show pot. this. Hold on. You're you... do... I'm doing it wrong. Am I doing it all no, wrong? No, I was just going to do... You You can... The, the official... Hopefully the sweat's gone, guys. Yeah, I, could not get the, I could not get the phone to, to connect. I was a little freaked out. Anyway, happy summer. I hope everyone's doing well. Um, we're a little scatterbrained, but we're, we'll make today uh, a fun day. And uh, uh, so I had gone to the post office box in a while, right, Ange? It's true. And I finally went, and there was just all this love, box after box of love. You guys, it's amazing. I set it all up so that it looks like we have a stationary pop-up shop, Ange. Look at all of this. There's so much cool stuff. People have sent me, like uh, Lee Edward Fody sent us his signed book. He sent us this totally cool handmade dragon, dragon egg. egg. There's an amazing drawing of a unicorn. What? Soph got so many birthday cards. Um, if you don't see a birthday card or a thing that you sent Soph, it's because she's already taken it upstairs, I think. <laughs> I was like, I feel some... like it came in batches, and it would go up to her room, and she was, I mean, look at this card. Look at this. And this, I mean, come Soph, on. Oh, um, beautifully drawn. Really Oops, amazing. sorry, I'm like. So amazing. There's more stuff here. Um, look at Kevin sent me that's amazing you know why i love this because he gave me a he put me on a diet Ange. <laughs> uh, he actually put me this on was pre-covid pre-covid yeah before i put on the covid uh 30 oh my gosh you guys this is unbelievable and it was crazy because tony we because you weren't going to the p.o box often no so when you went it was this insane Treasure trove. This is Grace Demeray, who uh, worked with us as our assistant yeah, for many years. Soph is a, look Soph. at this. I mean, so come amazing. On. Got, here's another one of Soph. It's like Legolas 
like a Harry Potter Legolas on a unicorn. Like it's like check, 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 Linda check all Granger. the things. Linda Granger. So awesome. This and, is. And so we on. have something special from Soph. Uh, she's not here right now. She's uh, she's working. That that happened. Soph got a very part time job. She drew this for you guys. Thanks for making my 2020 awesome. You guys give the best birthday presents. And she actually wrote a little something, which I'm going to read to you guys later. But okay. um, you guys, this is just so insanely generous, generous and thoughtful. Look at these cool dice bags. Oh, yeah. And they're full of dice. They're not just bags. I mean, There's dice in them. And they're awesome what? dice. Pew. Yeah, so much. You guys are amazing. You guys are uh, so thank unbelievably Thank you so much for all this. This is awesome. too cool. Yeah. And uh, really blown away. So let's get on. So what, now I think it's literally back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> We're super excited. And uh, I'm super excited to share what I've been working on. Now, if you've been in the um, the club or the group, the uh, drawn to the fans of fantasy group, you'll see that uh, I've been, I sneaked a little peek of this. And um, we actually, Angie and I, you and I ran this by Emily C. Martin, who founded the group, correct? Correct. So, so that we could we could have someone approve uh, what I've been working on quietly. As promised, we did not forget this. On the last day of uh, our 55-day our daily... run of Drawn to Fantasy, yeah. Tony promised that he was going to be putting all the sketches that uh, we created together because I feel That's like right. they wouldn't have been created if it was just UT. That's right. Not at all. No, us. no. And that we all created together into an actual sketchbook. Look at this. The design is so cool. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I'm going to give you guys a quick preview and, um, and tell you how you can get your own. Ooh. So um, I'll go through it. Uh, as, as you know, I don't. I don't want to spend the entire hour going and you through also it. Also, don't want to ruin give any it all. surprises. Yes. You don't want to give it all away. I don't want to give it all away. Um, there is a the the most textual read is this little thing that just I kind of wrote a little bit about what was going on and why we even did all this, and and how important it was, and uh, and how important it was both to you and I. Thank you, by the way, Emily C. Martin, for your approval. And uh, your thoughts on this. It was very cool sitting in front of the computer with you and kind of showing you everything. Yes. We wanted to make sure this was something that was actually fan approved. Yes. And so um, the other thing I will say is that not everything that we drew together is in here only because, well, to be honest with you, a lot of stuff I didn't scan, Ange. I would just throw it in the junk pot and mail it and didn't think twice about it. So it was only later that I began to think like, maybe I should save some of this stuff or I'd scan it to show on social media. But the one thing I did want to show is there are captions, but the captions are not by me. They generally coincide with the folks like you who were watching. And so it's a it's kind of a book that we made together. So it, it, it is fairly chronological in that it shows the things we did as we did them starting in March and going into the end of May. And um, you can kind of see, I'll give a quick zip, but it's got... You know, things by Eric Keogh and June Gallagher and everybody who said so much amazing things. And this was a pretty, to be honest with you, when the feed's going, Ange, I'm not, you're the only one looking at the, uh, at the, the comments and questions. Generally, I'm not. So this was a great opportunity for me to kind of go back through the archives of all the live feeds and, um, and look at some of the amazing things. I was so touched um, by some of the amazing stuff that you guys wrote uh, during these feeds. And it, and it really made me feel um, so connected to all of you. So here's just a, a sneak peek. Um, Dobby! There's Dobby. So you, the question you're wondering is like, all right, so he's going to print this up. When's he going to print it up? How are we going to get it? I'm not going to print it up. We're going to, because our relationship at this point is virtual and probably will remain virtual, virtual for the foreseeable future. Until the wedding. Until, yes, until... <laughs> Till the wedding, then therefore I felt that the sketchbook should also be virtual. So this is going to be a PDF virtual sketchbook that you'll be able to download and have, and you can either print it out or look at it on your device. And um, the way you're going to be able to get it, Ange, is um, Emily um, is going to send a link through the group, right? Yes. Um, through, so if you join the Fans of Fantasy group. Yes, yeah, so if you draw, ugh, if you join... The fans of Drawn to Fantasy page on Facebook, 
Emily C. Martin is going to send you an exclusive code to be able to access the files. That's right. So and you will be able to download this sketchbook. You'll be able to print it out. You'll be able to have it on your desktop. However you want uh, it. However you want it. It is going to be there for you. And we're, this is going to be a timed release. So we're only going to have it available for a few weeks. After that, Ange, a low-resi virtual flipbook version will live on my website that we'll have later. But it will be not as high. And you won't be able to download it. So it won't be a resolution. So there'll be a... Lee, yes, you can print it yourself. That's absolutely. That. Yep, that's what we're giving you. We're going to give you the PDF that essentially has all these files. And you'll be able to have this as this book that we made together because as Chad Thompson said, this is like a masterclass for free. <laughs> he said that. Good. Yeah. Well timed. Anyway. So, um, that's it. I'm not going to give you guys the whole thing. This is a little sneaky peek. Um, but then we'll, uh, we'll make the PDF available so you guys can enjoy it. Cheryl Ishi, Yes. The Owlbear's in here. And yes, Cheryl Ishi, you're also quoted, I think at some point in this thing, I tried to get everybody, um, but June you know, Gallagher's just joining the show, and I think June was one of the first quotes. That June Gallagher, you're yeah. definitely quoted in this. So there it is, the Drawn to Fantasy sketchbook. It will be uh, available uh, in the next day or two. We will make it and um, available, and uh, so join the club or maybe the fan for group. This, maybe for this, we could even do like a fun thing where we do a Zoom or something, you know? I would like, love that. I know we've it. talked about doing a Zoomer or a Facebook group thing where we can all kind of hang out together. I would love that. And yeah. uh, I think that would just be so much fun. So I, I made good. It just takes me a little while to get to these things, but I did uh, design the sketchbook and it's all ready to go. Also, Lots of amazing sketches for you to just enjoy. Just saying, on the Drawn to Fantasy fan page, I think, was it Alfonso maybe? That started like where there's like a room where people can hang out, like a little hangout room where you could go. I went in there last week. Nobody was there. I thought I'd pop in. I saw it was open. I was like, everybody must be hanging out. Nobody was in there. Oh, wow. So maybe we'll have to set up a time where we can actually uh, hang out. I love that. Is it live like a Zoom, Ange, where we're all just kind of hanging yeah, out and talking? I think oh. so. Oh, yeah, we should do it. Let's plan a day and we can all do that. I mean... We're not, uh, we're not going anywhere, right? We're all kind of here. We're staying put. I hadn't sharpened my uh, pencils beforehand. Nice. But they're sharp now. So today is going to be a uh, drawn by request. We're going to do a little draw by request. Um, I do have another bit of news, Ange, about the, the uh, portfolio. Should we do that too? Sure. Let's do the portfolio totally. news before we You draw. guys are getting all of the, like, and this was actually not intentional that we were doing Drawn to Fantasy today, and then this dropped here at the house Yes, today. yes. So let me see if I can, I don't even know if I can get this whole darn thing to fit I in here. Um, oh, yeah. You should hold it. Yeah. You want to hold it? Okay, here sure. we're going. We're going on. There okay. we go. Andrew's going to hold, hold it. Hold on, we're going. All right, so here we go. So this was... So you have to back up more. It's that big, see? Yes, perfect. Thank Dungeon you. Drawings came out in 2015, I believe. We did this for Gen Con when I was the um, guest artist that year. This was kind of inspired by the old portfolios that I collected, like, uh, like Frank Frazetta did a bunch of these portfolios in the 70s and the 80s. So what it is, it's a loose portfolio of pen and ink drawings. And the portfolio was numbered and signed. Here you go. You can see David it. May said he bought a copy from the Mint. And so you bought the first version of this. And this, this... is volume one. Yes. Now, volume one is sold out. It's yeah. been sold out for a while. But literally, about two hours ago, volume two showed up. Da, da, da. This is going to be a very limited run. Um, this was done by request of Noble Knight Games, who continues to sell lots of my gaming and D&D &D type stuff. The folks there have been so supportive, and it's been a great outlet to allow me to keep drawing Dungeons & dragons and stuff, which I obviously love so much. So we're going to do an addition of 100 of these only. Um, I have to still sign and number them, but they came in, and uh, if you guys want to see, I don't know if, Angie, if you can kind of... Sure, I'll zoom in on that bad boy. So you guys can see some of the plates. They look terrific. They're all 11 by uh, 14. They are on uh, Canson paper, so it's mm -hmm. this beautiful textured paper. Awesome. It just holds the ink so well. Really nice quality. I'm super stoked. I can't wait. I'll be signing and I'll be signing these. So some Look at this might... guy. I think you're having a bad day. Yeah, it could be this he guy. He just got some slime here that on his hand. There's his hand. That's the le what's left of his hand oh, down there man, on the just ground. Just turned to goo. Yep. And just so you know, what gets me excited is like the black. Look how rich that black is, Angie. Really yeah, get it looks that. Awesome. It's really but, nice. So T. Um, 
definitely oversees all of the printing on this. So, I mean, it's as close to, it's a very, very uh, mom and pop, but like amazing printing company called Marcus Printing that's been around for forever that we work with. They're yeah. unbelievable. They came and delivered proofs to our house uh, and all of this so we could get this done. Yeah, I didn't have to go to the printer. Actually, they came up, we put our masks on, we sat out in the front yard, looked at the proofs. So we went through a couple of rounds of proofs. We reproofed a few of them just to get the colors just right. And uh, How do we, we order these? I will post the information on ordering these in the next week or two once Noble Knight gets their order. However... And we can also post it to the Drawn to Fantasy fans first, yes, maybe? So, sure. I mean, you only got a hundred of those, so right? So Now, a lot of people have asked about um, the first one, Ange. Okay. And uh, we had maybe 30 left, I, I want to say. And the Mitt Museum bought them for their gift shop when I had my exhibition there last year. I called the Mitt Museum this morning. They have like a dozen left. Oh, so I have all the information on how to get the first one, and I will post that information. I posted it on Twitter and Instagram already, but I will post it uh, after we do our feed today. I will post the information. They get a phone number and everything. You just call it, and they'll ship it. Unfortunately, only in the United States. They don't have the capacity. I think they're working Bummer. with a small crew because it is a museum gift shop in Charlotte, North Carolina. A terrific staff there, great, great people. I'm happy to support them. So uh, you can still get Volume 1 for a very, very limited time. I feel like we're in a PBS. I know, I'm like, okay. Like a, we're like a fundraiser. If you order now. Okay, yeah. stop hawking stuff, T. Start I'm drawing. Done. I'm done hawking. That's it. That was all the <laughs> No, we were really excited to share that with you guys. Yes. So here mean, we go, it, back to the drawing It board. literally came like two hours before uh, we went live. So I was so excited. And, uh, and when I should have been in reinstalling Facebook Not in my the phone. Not Museum, the Mint Museum, <laughs> uh, uh, um, Jubal, which is the Mint Museum is in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes, yes. Uh, as far as the prices, um, the suggested retail price for this is $100 because it's signed and limited. Um, however, I do believe both the Mint and... Um, Noble Knight will be offering at um, like a special discount. So uh, once I have all those details, I will let you know. Awesome. Let's do some drawing. All right. Well, I'm I ready to we draw. Can do it now because Dave Peterson's here. Well, finally, <laughs> we the show can start because Dave's here. Um, so excited. So, uh, oh my God, Jason alone. I happened to glance down. He goes, "Can I draw my favorite Muppet?" Mm, that is a good one, dude. So awesome. So I have many favorite Muppets. When I was a kid, my absolute favorite Muppet was Beaker. I just loved that. I loved Beaker. That simplicity to 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 Beaker's design. How he just had the and he had the lab coat and of course everything horrible. He doesn't have ears. He doesn't have eyebrows. He's just like a Q-tip of hair. Oh my gosh! Now, <laughs> and I've we, now it wouldn't be a drawn to fantasy if we didn't also have some kind of crazy story that ties into exactly what I'm drawing, okay. right, Ange? Sure. And the story I have for you guys today, with regards to Beaker, curious, okay. is we met Beaker, the real Beaker. It is an actual person. I don't remember how Honeydew's glasses went. I think they're round. Yeah, buns and honeydews. Yeah, I, Honey, think, I so. think his glasses are round. I don't remember. I know there's no eyes. I think he has ears. I could be wrong. <laughs> I think it's this. I uh, and it's been a little while, so if I got it wrong, sorry. There's a couple great things about the Muppets that you guys should know. Number one, the Muppets in the Muppet Show, when the Muppets really got take were taking off, many of the puppets were designed by a man named Michael Frith. And there we go. This is the. Uh, what a Zoom meeting looks like now, right, Ansh? It's, it's basically <laughs> yeah. everybody, when we all Zoom together, this is what it's going to be like. Do you know Bunsen would be, he'd have his hand around Beaker. It's going to be fine, Beaky. <laughs> Beaky. Beaky. I feel like I got the nose wrong. There's something wrong. I don't, I don't know what's off. Could I, be the nose. Could be. <laughs> we should get things started. We tour Muppet Labs. Uh, we have toured some of Mupp the Henson facilities. Um, however, let me get back to Michael Frith. Michael Frith, Ange, 
who designed a lot of the Muppets. Now, of course, many, if you're, if you're a, a Muppetologist, you know that many of the Muppets started, um, some started with Sesame Street, some started before that, and certainly Kermit and uh, Ralph the Dog had been around for a very long time and had, had appearances like the Ed Sullivan Show and stuff like that. But when the Muppet Show actually was coming into being, the, and the cast grew exponentially. You added Gonzo, you added the Electric Mayhem, you added Fozzie Bear, et cetera. And, um, oh, there it is. I'm pretty close. He's more got like that, like yeah. kind of. Yeah, that chin thing, like. Oh, and the glasses are too far apart. Thank you, though, Ange. We'll yeah, get no the glasses problem. right. So Michael Frith designed a lot of these puppets, and Michael started out as Dr. Seuss's assistant. That was like so one of his cool. early things. In fact, he did some terrific early uh, ready-to-read books in under the Dr. Seuss imprint, including um, Soph Love the One. What's the one where the bug sneezes all because a bug said a chew? Yes. And then it causes this whole chain reaction. That's Michael Frith. But Michael designed The Electric Mayhem. He designed, I believe, Fozzie Sweetums. Just a, a terrific guy. And I knew, I got to know Michael. He was a lovely uh, person. Um, I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh, hopefully he's well, but... Um, I'm a huge Muppet fan, and I would say Bunsen and Beaker. The other, um, and I, the little bit of... Um, Wait, so you met the real Beaker. We met the real Beaker. Beaker is based on a man named John Stevenson. Oh, my God, it's so John cool. Stevenson. Now, if you're an animation film lover, John has directed some pretty amazing animated movies, including Kung Fu Panda and... Um, not Nomeo and Juliet, but the other one that came after, the second Nomeo and Juliet. Uh, is it Sherlock Gnomes? Is that the second one? Yes. He directed that one as well. John is an old Muppet guy. He started out um, there, and John had red hair. He was very shy. He hardly ever spoke, and uh, he told me that uh, Beaker was based after him. So Bunsen and Beaker would be my favorites. Um, however, um, a, one last bit of... Um, trivia, let's see, Bunsen, Ooh, Beaker. That's right, Beaker. Uh, Beaky, just try this on. It'll be fine. Beaker and Bunsen. Bunsen? I'm guessing it's Bunsen, like a bumps. A, Bunsen? A, and today is what? The Do 17th? It's Dr. Bunsen. Bunsen Honeydew, because he has a honeydew head. <laughs> Such a great name. Um, the other thing I will do, and this is, it's been a little while since I've drawn him, so this may not be a very good drawing. That's but we'll a pretty see. good drawing from memory. I from mean, memory. Beaker is like... This is where I may blow it, is with Ted. So. Let me see if I can. So if you don't know, Ted was um, the character in my second picture book that I, that I wrote and, and illustrated. He's an imaginary best friend. And... Um, Jubal, by the way, pulled up an image of John, and it does capture his look. You can oh, see good. It you can you see do. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you Google John Stevenson, like Kung Fu Panda, so you don't get a bunch of other John Stevenson. There's a lot of John Stevensons out in the you world. You will see it completely resembles him. So Ted was my second picture book um, that I wrote and illustrated. It came after Jimmy Zangwell. So almost 20 years old now, which is crazy to believe. And Ted has some connections to the Muppets, too. Number one, Ted, in my mind, even though he's an imaginary character, I always imagined Ted to be very Muppety, almost like he was a stuffed toy that had come to life. And to do that, to show that Ted has a, bell a button for a belly button, Ange. But he also has a tie in the book. He has this polka dot tie. And his polka dot tie, that's very floppy, was inspired by Fozzie Bear's tie. So Ted... He's got, is, a vest on. he's got a little vest, but he was in, that little tie was an homage to Fozzie Bear because I've always felt like Ted was a living Muppet. And Frank Oz. Frank Oz, when he was very young. Miss Piggy and Fink. Yoda. Yoda. Yoda, Yoda thank you, Yoda. Mm. Anything that goes. Mm. 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 Or. Hey I want to say Bert and Ernie. One was Jim Henson, one was Frank Oz, and I'm guessing. Ernie was Jim and Bert was Frank Oz. Anyway, longtime Muppet uh, legend. Um, I had this book on on the Muppets, and there was a photo of Frank Oz when he was very young, and he had this kind of kind of narrow, kind of light bulby head, and he was he had like a 
kind of a 60s, it was from the 60s, so he had this kind of little 60s, little Sinatra, and he had these kind of blocky, heavy glasses, and this is kind of what, I, I, there was this this this, this drawing, or no, this, because that's him as a Muppet, basically, that yeah, he's drawing right now. this photo of Frank Oz when he was really young, and, he was the lawyer in Knives Out, great piece of, oh, nice, yeah, we spotted him, nice, Anyway, Frank Oz was the inspiration for the dad in Ted, or what the dad actually looked like was based on this um, old photograph of Frank Oz. And so, uh, so there's another bit of trivia and a connectivity. In fact, when we did the... Um, you have a great story on that because you um, met Frank um, when you were on the Today Show. You did his makeup yes. and you told him this. I, well, I didn't do... I didn't do his makeup. Uh, so um, the You Muppets, tell the story, and I'm going to go see if I can find the sure, photo. Sure, sure, sure. So th when I was working on the Today Show, you know, the Muppets would come in every so often to do a segment, and they would have them, you know, all ready to go, and they'd be having a conversation with Katie Couric or whoever the host was at the time. That's who was hosting when I worked there, and Matt Lauer and Al Roker. Um, and I remember Al was talking to... I believe it was Miss Piggy and Kermit. But what was awesome is I was in the back and you just see them bring out these huge boxes. And when you see the boxes, you're like, oh my gosh, is is what is that what's in there? What I think is in there? And then they open the boxes and you're like, oh, it's all of your favorite characters, all of your favorite Muppets from childhood. And I remember I completely freaked out out because Miss Piggy was there um, and then I looked and I saw Frank Oz and Tony had done the book Ted and so I went up and I completely fangirled over Frank Oz and I was like um Mr. Oz um so my husband is a children's book illustrator and he modeled the dad in this book which is about a magic character named Ted who's pink and he is inspired by Fonzie Fozzie Bear and I was just totally bugging out and I uh, told Frank all about it. And he said, well, here's my info. I said, can we send you a book? And he said, absolutely. So Tony autographed him a book and did a drawing for him and thanked him for the inspiration. Uh, okay. And you it. sent the book to Frank Oz, which was so cool just to be able to tell one of the, the people that you so greatly admired what a huge fan, not only that they are to you, but then they've inspired you um as well in your creativity so this was was our frank oz inspired drawing character that tony did the dad so there's ted with Fozzie bear's tie and here's the dad and to give you guys an idea this is um jim henson the works so i think it came out in maybe in the late 90s early 2000s so there's the photo Frank Oz, that was the inspiration for the dad and Ted. You s s tell all this to Frank, and we get a letter. We got a letter. Well, oh, he so, signs then, something. So I tell him the whole thing, and he's like, okay, here's my info. And he, like, scrolls it down. I want to say we have that. Let me see. Keep up. Keep up. Yeah. Keep but, up. you know, when I worked in television, it was a very different time. I mean, social media wasn't going on yet, so... You never asked for photos with celebrities. I mean, it was very rare that I would approach someone and ask them for a photo. But I did ask Frank Oz for a picture with him, which I think I took at the time with like a disposable camera. It's really bad. Um, but that was kind of cool because it was, it was very, very cool. So I got to like totally fan out over the Muppets, over Miss Piggy, who I'm obsessed with, and then also fan out over Frank Oz. I know so. why I can't find the letter. Because it's at... The Norman Rockwell Museum. The, I forgot. I'm so digging. The, t the continuation of the story is that Tony sends him the book. He sends back a lovely letter. Um, well, because he was like, should lawyers be involved? That's right. You've stolen my likeness. Um, and then that got put in your exhibition that went to the Norman Rockwell Museum. And that's and where so it's, it's at. It's at the... Art. A photo of Frank Oz, the letter from Frank Oz. Yes. It's just pretty cool. Showing how I, how the Muppets had inspired me, this big kid uh, who grew up on the Muppets. Every Friday night at 7.30, that's when the Muppet Show came on. I remember it so well. Oh, yeah. So there you go, some Muppets. Great first uh, ask. I'm just trying to... I have not drawn all day, uh, so... 
that's going to working all day. I've had stuff going on, but it's uh, phone calls and stuff like that. The, the craziness has continued, guys, since we we ended Drawn to Fantasy. Things have been chugging along. Yeah. And it's been awesome. It's been really good. One all right. of these days, we'll get to share these. Hopefully, yes. That are happening. Ted. Hopefully. All right, let's do another one, Angela. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling inspired. Is anybody else? All right, All right. what are we going to draw next? All right, you guys let us know what you want to, what you to think? draw. Oh, yeah, then Paul Williams. <laughs> you have to draw Paul Williams. Oh, my God. What about, or, or even what about... Um, Emmett Otter? Emmett Otter, somebody oh from Emmett Otter. Oh, my gosh, I love Emmett Otter. Who doesn't love Emmett Otter? I know. That was a great kid's book, too. That was done by... Uh, it's going to... I feel like Emmett... Um, and we've seen Emmett Otter. If you go to the, uh, if you ever make it to Atlanta, once the world uh, kind of goes somewhat back to where we can all hang out together again, in Atlanta, um, there's many amazing things to do in Atlanta if you've never been, uh, including the aquarium, which is a sight unto itself. And let's not forget all the amazing barbecue and food you'll eat. But the Puppet Museum is there that I believe might have been even started by the Hensons, or they were certainly part of it. And uh, Emmett Otter's Jug Band, the the whole cast is there, all the puppets. And we got to see him, and I just sat there and stared. I'm doing a lousy job of Emmett. I'm trying to think of... They've got this kind of really... He almost doesn't look like an otter. He just looks like a little... like a little puffball, and then he's got a scarf, I want to say. And I'm thinking of the Lillian and James Hoban. That's it. They are the ones that did this is what Emmett Otter. You are of Emmett Otter. I couldn't find Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas on Apple Music, which is our streaming music of choice that we use. But then I searched oh, my, my library. Oh, yeah. Our library, and there it was. So there's a certain song that I love if you're drawing some Emmett Otter. Let me see. I'm going to just do my version Oh, yeah, barbecue. Boom, 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 boom. Don't you just want me to create the sound talk to your, to your drawing all the time? Like, look at that. Just, you are so smiley right now. It's awesome. I really am, because I'm at Otters. How can you not? It takes me to a time before COVID. <laughs> oh, does he have, like, a scarf that ties... If you ever get it on your nails. <laughs> yeah, I'm singing. My little Muppet mouth. <laughs> boom, boom. I love the snake. Oh, yeah. We don't brush our teeth. <laughs> <laughs> He's thumbing that thing. Boom, boom, boom. True story, we met, um, we're going to drop this name on, on because, you know, it wouldn't be drawn to fantasy without dropping names. We meet Paul Williams. We told that we story. We told that story. The first thing I tell him is like, look, I know you've written a lot of amazing things, but it's really about barbecue. Ooh, somebody requested, Desiree said, I'm from Kansas, so something Oz-related. Tony Ooh, always likes to draw Oz. Oz stuff. I'm drawing Oz stuff in a while. Oh, is this when they're? That's part of the talent. That's the talent <laughs> show. The up in the air. Emmett Otter, a little happy Emmett. Okay, hold on. I'm, I'm okay. Now that I have control, I'm going to. Okay, Emmett Otter. That's seven, seventeen, twenty. All right. Let's see Oz. I can do some Oz. Let's see, and boy, there's a lot of characters in Oz, and uh, you know the movie—they're all really creepy. <laughs> all the Oz you know, characters. All the Oz characters in the books are disturbing, but somehow in a book, it's not as scary as it is in a movie. Like the lady who can take her heads off. <laughs> if I was going to do Oz now, I Does think I have to change the music because. I, so I, I know the Tin Man. In a traditionally was kind of a cylinder, but I would, I would make, I mean, I love that he's got the funnel. So W.W. Denslow did the original Oz illustrations only for the first book. And then what I understand it is that him and 
bomb had a falling out. And I don't remember why. I've read it, though. And so then J R uh, John R. Neal becomes the illustrator for the Oz books. All nine zillion of them after that. So he's got that kind of proto-robot. The Tin Man has that kind of proto-robot. Like, that's how he's kind of depicted in the in the books. It's funny now. Like, how would I would I do him if I was doing it? Like, would I do try to do um, old-timey? Like, would he have a real... I don't know, it's kind of interesting. You do the nose real long. And would it have a little... Would you give him ears? Low chin. It's interesting. I almost wonder if I would. These old, these old funnels. I think funnels were really. I. I had to Google old, like, turn-of-the-century funnels when I worked on Kenny, the uh, new one, Book of Beasts, because he has the car. And I, I was like, oh, he would use a, a funnel for his motor oil. And uh, they were, some of them were really neat shapes. So I would definitely look at that. I think I'm, it's, guess is, I bet you would look at a lot of design of all that old stuff and old metal and you'd probably be like looking at all the all of that packaging oil cans and yeah I mean it's interesting would you would you make him not just um, metal but like would you make him look like he's out of recycle like would they be old soup cans and and things like that like that'd be kind of an interesting. I always liked how he had kind of square eyes. That was always kind of a neat thing, but I don't know if I would. Maybe something like that. But it is weird when you think about it. The other thought is, too, is would you just draw a person? So I'd have to figure out the general shape. Is the Scarecrow the skinny guy? If he's a tin woodsman, he'd actually probably be kind of built like a lumberjack. So what if he and what if he was more like a a lumberjack with a beard? <laughs> Alfonso said, "I think the modern one would be much more steampunky." Alfonso, you know how we feel about steampunk. Don't, We've discussed this. Yeah, no steampunk, bro. <laughs> I can't do. St I can't. I don't know why. I know I should. My response is always, stop trying to make steampunk happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, man, like he's almost, yeah, it's interesting. Could you? Paul Bunyan robot, I dig that. Yeah, he's more like a, I was Robo just going to say. lumberjack, I dig that. Yeah, I mean, he's a woodsman. Wouldn't he be kind of lumberjacky? I don't know if that's a real adjective, but you guys know what I mean. <laughs> Alfonso, exactly why I said it. Thank you. That's how well we know each other. <laughs> we don't even know how to push our buttons. <laughs> this, I was going to say, this guy looks like Yukon Cornelius. He doesn't look like a lumberjack. He not, that's not a, that's not a He's tin like, man hat. Yeah, well, Come maybe on. it's more... Uh, now he's Abe Lincoln. I don't know, T. This he's is... very, um, he looks like he's from a Leica movie now. Like he should be in stop motion. Well, that's his little, his little rinkin' and bass mouth. Makes <laughs> you think of that. That's why. And like, watch. Uh, Dallin said, looks like Santa with a beard. Is there Santa without a beard? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I would really go down a weird path with the, like the Tin Woodsman to try to make him, you know, I would look up like Pioneer... Woodsman from nineteen the nineteen hundreds and you would start looking up the history of the you of know, everything you go straight to the period the ensemble and then I would create a thing that is completely irrelevant to a twenty first century kid exactly <laughs> and the kid yeah, they'd and look at it like, that looks old fashioned I don't like that one 
want that, Mom. Can we get Diary of a Wimpy Kid instead? <laughs> Anyway, and and you know what? There's only one thing that would make this design better, Angie. You know what that is? Putting a huge axe in his hand. <laughs> oh, well, children. Wait, isn't the whole myth with the Tin Woodsman is he's cursed, so he every time he cut off a part of his body, it was replaced with tin? I think that's what the original book was. So that makes you uh, rethink that whole situation. I don't know. And this is strangely skull-like. I think I'm just not... I think it's... You're not feeling this. I can tell. You're not in the zone of the... the Let me try... <laughs> it just looks terrifying. Let me try at least a scarecrow. I think I can manage a scarecrow. I mean... Sure I, about that. I don't know. Let's try a... Um, well, I'm gonna, now he is the villain from Dudley Do-Right. I'm going to start with a with the burlap sack that's like his head, right? I mean, that's, he's always kind of depicted as... Oh, the, gosh. I'm terrified already. All right. So, oh, he's, oh, God. That is... You don't understand... That's triggering to me. Okay, let me tell you. So, Burlap I don't know if you guys remember a movie. If any of you are in your 40s ish, um, but there was a movie, I want to say it was called like The Scarecrow or something creepy. And there was a really creepy, there was a guy who hid out in a field posing as a corn, in a cornfield as a scarecrow. And it, it was like a horror movie. So now whenever I see like these kinds of scarecrows drawn, it freaks me out. Really? All right. I'm going to put like a happy little farm. Ha I'm going to put like little, <laughs> he's going to have hay. I'm going to find this movie. No, don't do it. No, I got to face my fears. <laughs> you, I guess so. Still have nightmares. Yes, Kevin Sylvester. That is one of the besides Jaws. This was the other movie. Dude, she's still scarred from Jaws, guys. I mean, she talks about that all the time. Was it called Jeepers Creeper? What is Dark Knight of the Scarecrow? You guys are naming all all of these sounds sound like it could be the movie because they're terrifying sounding. I remember that movie. It was frightening. See, Barbara Colbert. Remember? <gasps> other people remember it. You guys are Look, awesome. I'm trying to make him the kindest looking scarecrow I can. I'm looking it up. Scary. 80s? Or would have been the 70s? Scarecrow. Movie. Look, he's very Muppety too. Look. Is that bad? A little like, bit? Yeah. <gasps> you find it? Did I find it? Oh, oh you... I found it, and I, that's why I couldn't remember. What's it called? Oh, I don't know. You tell me. The Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. That guy looks super friendly. He Look, he's willing to rake your... He'll rake up your leads. Look at that. That's terrifying. I'm scarred from that. Maybe I need to face my fears. We need to watch it. I mean, look at that. That's horrible. No, nah, that's not that scary. Look at the... <laughs> Just the font alone should make you, like, not scared. I mean, it's such horrible isn't typography. That, isn't that scary stories to tell in the dark? Doesn't that have a scarecrow on it? Too? Well, yeah, that's scary stories that just scare the, the, your pants off. Yes, They're just it's this... the one where the guy was shot, Dominic. That's exactly it. I got to tell you, that was, for me, the one that really freaked me out and scared me as a kid was a movie called Night of the Comet. Oh, yeah. Well, that was awesome. It was in a mall. And it was in a mall, but, but before it was in a mall, everyone just turned into piles of dust. dust. <gasps> okay, can I Ooh, that freaked say, me out. That really bothered me. Scarecrows are scary, inherently. A, they have the name scare in them, and B, they're meant to be scary. If you're a crow. Yeah, but that's scare that's terrifying. What if his eyes like a fake stuffed body out of hay? What if his eyes like glow? <laughs> a dead corpse hanging in a empty field. Look, he's even got a little pipe. He's almost like a snowman. He's like a fall snowman. Wow, clowns are, are far worse, Andrea Dallin says. You know? Oh, wait, his arms would be like this. What am I doing? His arms are like this. And he's got the weird... This is what Denzel always did. The fingers were always like this. That did freak me out. Because it's just gloves, but with no bones. It's kind of like when Harry Potter um, loses the bone in his arm. The glove, it's just weird, wrinkly fingers. Now the horror. Does that look better? Is that better? No. Okay. Uh, it's tough when you're a scarecrow. It's, it's just tough. What about John Cougar Mellencamp's song, Scarecrow? Nothing with scarecrows. 
Nothing. No scarecrow. Mm. You've heard it here. This is it. No scarecrows for Ange. No. I didn't know about this. I just thought it was Jaws. Now, your fear of Jaws, scarecrow. <laughs> I don't know. Let's, seven, we're just all 17, our 20. Today. Yes. All right. So, scarecrows, yeah. definitely one of those things. And you, here's the other thing you don't see them anytime except Halloween. So, obviously, they've still been associated with terrifying people. Maybe I should face my fears. Well, I'm drawing. Although the Fan Brothers did do a book about a scarecrow, I think. It was a children's book, a picture book. Okay. Was it scary? It scared me. I love their art, but. Oh, come on. This song, so good. I know. It's but awesome. so sad. That's why I like it, because it's very, to me, it's just so. It's very, it's, it's, uh, it's what we're all thinking about right now. Somewhere beyond the reality, the reality that, we're that we're in. It's melancholy. Well, think about it. She was, it was the Great Depression when she was singing it, right? All right, Ange, this is Tiny You. I'm doing a horrible job of it because I'm not warmed up. But I'm drawing you, Young You. you gotta I, look. Had, I like that you're drawing you with good hair, whatever that is, because my hair was bad. I, I would have had a mullet that my mom cut for me. Well, you're pretty young. Oh, you would have these things, those little... After watching shark movies, I don't go in the ocean now, and I'm in Florida. Josh Sanders, I feel you. That's right. That's what we're going to draw, right, Ange? Yeah. So I'm going to draw you in your 80s gear. This would have been striped. Yes. Like a pinky purple. Those would have been short. Those shorts. Like these? Yeah. I got a squeaky eraser, man. It's like a... Uh, Elementary school all over again. When you go to the grocery store and you get that wiggly cartwheel. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. Okay, so you're Bye, scared. Amanda. Bye, Amanda. And you were scared of? Terrified of Jaws. But not just Jaws. Any body of water, small or large, that Jaws could possibly be in, even if it was completely irrational, and Inc most especially, the toilet. You were scared that Jaws was going to come out of the toilet. <laughs> totally was. You were drawing my. See, we're gonna face it. We're gonna face it together. Yeah, I thought Jaws. So I had seen Jaws. Apparently way too young. I wasn't really allowed to watch it, but uh, I remember my mom and her husband watching it. And uh, they were in the living room, and I peeked around the corner. Yeah, you know, usually, clearly the wrong part, right? The 70s parenting, early 80s parenting was, we're going to watch inappropriate movies. My parents would literally go, close your eyes. Close this your eyes. Close, close your eyes. eyes. Just close your eyes at this part. That happened with The Deep. My parents let me watch most of The Deep, and my dad go... There's a part where they do like weird, like voodoo stuff with like chicken feet and blood. My dad goes, close your eyes. Can I open them? It? Nah. Yeah. And you just hear screaming. Ah, ah, ah. Can I open them now? Not yet. Not and then, yet. The, and then you're like, okay, now. And then there's settled. It didn't ma and, matter because you were looking through your fingers anyway and you were going to be terrified. And then they're at a bar drinking or something. He goes, all right, you can open your eyes now. So uh, everything's fine. So I peeked around the corner during Jaws. I think I was supposed to be in my bedroom, and I looked, and I saw just Jaws just doing what Jaws does. Eaten. Because I lived in the suburbs of Chicago. We had no sharks there. Lake Michigan, there's no sharks. Yeah. And so, you know, you'd go swimming in somebody's backyard pool or go to the lake or something like that, but you were swimming on Lake Michigan. You weren't swimming that, you don't know that. in an ocean. But when I saw Jaws, I immediately thought, all large bodies of water, or small bodies of water for that matter, could have jaws in them. Including like the sink. It was just bizarre. Any water. It's like why people have fear of clowns. You know, you see poltergeist as a kid, ruined forever your childhood, you're scarred. Yeah, so, sure. At night. Well, actually this, whatever you're playing now is pretty anxiety producing. That's the witch, right? <laughs> so I would go at night and I would stand by my doorway, 
completely terrified because I thought Jaws was going to come down the hallway in a random tsunami of water. And then if I actually made it through the hallway, he was going to be in the bathroom, in the toilet. That's what I thought was going to happen. There he is. And here he is in the toilet coming after you and your little... There you go. Young Ange being tormented by Jaws. There you go. Do you have any toilet paper? <laughs> see? Do you see how I did that, Ange? It's because it's like it's a joke, but then it's also like a meta joke. Because it's... Never mind. I got it. So just messaged. Oh, yeah? Is she coming over? Say hi to our friends? <laughs> yeah, she's working. One of she us is. She's letting me know what she was doing at work. Well, at least one of us is working, Ange. All right, Ange. Jaws, there okay. it is, just for you. By Jaws. the way, the Jaws theme song was also not on Apple Music. And I don't, I think I have that one. And nor do I know how the back of a toilet looks, apparently. I don't know quite what goes on behind that there. That bowl's I, pretty ginormous. That's a big bowl. And it's, and I'm not sure, there's a thing here and then another you're thing. You're going to need a bigger bowl. You're gonna, <laughs> there's a thing. Yeah. Well, for Jaws to get through, you're absolutely going to need a bigger bowl. There he is, Jaws, just for you. All right. Dun, dun. You're wearing little peds with little those little pom poms on the back. I My sister had the have had those. Been wearing those Jabberjaw. Oh gosh, who doesn't Even love Jabberjaw? Even that was the thing though, because you're like Jabberjaw's fun and funny, but you've seen Jaws, so it doesn't yeah. matter. Now, um, Jaws also spawned a skit that Chevy Chase used to do on Saturday Night Live. Ange, do you remember what that skit was? Yep. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Who's there? Uh, delivery boy. Delivery for who? Uh, for James uh, Modling. James Modling. There's no James Modling here. And then you have to open the door. And then you open the da door, and then it's Jaws. It's Jaws. Mm -hmm. It's Land Shark. Yeah, Land, Land Shark. Shark. <laughs> and Land Shark inspires a classic Dungeons and Dragons monster. That is literally called... Candy Graham. That's it, Candy. I was waiting for you to do the Candy Graham. Thank you, Kate Blair Wheeler. Candy Graham. And let's see. I have gotten the opportunity to draw this monster a couple of times for Dungeons & Dragons. It is... Boulet. The Boulet. Robert Boulet. Robert Boulet, a.k.a. the Land Shark, which was created by a game designer by the name of Tim Kask. Tim worked with Gary Gygax and company and was the f first editor for a magazine called Dragon Magazine, which you'll never guess what that magazine's about. Anyway, Tim uh, Cass created the Boulet from a very uh, cheap pack of dime store toys, which we now know are called the Chinosaurs. I've written articles on it, yada, yada, yada. Also... He told me it was inspired by Chevy Chase's Land Shark skit, which was, of course, inspired by the Jaws craze. So we have come from Jaws to the home to Dungeons and Dragons, as as I am wont to do. Here it is. Ooh, this is very magic. Is this Dungeons and Dragons music? Mm hmm Yeah. You really went, you did that, huh? <laughs> you, you're going to do that to everybody here. There's literally 100 people listening, and you're going to do that to all 100. This is going to spread faster than the virus, that earworm. Stop. No, I can't. Uh, no, and neither will we. After their long, it would be hours from now. They'll be done watching the show, and then that's better. Anyway, there it is, the Boule, a classic Dungeons and Dragons monsters, which made its debut in the 1970s. Ooh, and inspired by Chevy Chase and his. Oh <laughs> man, it's like I got rickrolled. Yes. Wow. All right, Mommy Shark, while you're doing that, why don't you pick... I'm so proud of that, you guys. That I, I was really proud of that You should be. Moment. Someone, <laughs> all I know is, Ange, someone's going to get one heck of a junk pot today. Are we We're done? Gonna, 
We're done. It's 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 we've hit the hour, Mommy Shark. So uh, I'm thinking. First, I have to read the text that well, the the message that Soph wanted me to share with. Okay. Them. Do you want me to film you while you read it? Oh, I don't. I, I don't care. I mean, obviously you can, but either way, you or look, you could draw something. No, you look nice. I want you. To I read do. It. Yeah, you look nice today. Oh, Come on, guys. Let's give it up for Ange. Look at her. She's looking good. She hasn't given up like I have. I mean, look. I I mean, my hair was. Feeling very Stevie Nicks. You are. You my tambourine. No, you don't. But you know what you do have, Ange. Yeah, just come on, guys. They want this. Hold on, They're. Hold on. I'm reading all your comments. Baby shark. There it is. Ta da! Yeah, very nice. All right. Why don't you read? Uh... You actually have to blow pretty hard on a slide whistle. Like you can't just. It doesn't get the full effect. You have to give like the full gusto. So that was impressive. I know they missed that too. As much <laughs> as much as the baby shark. Uh, wow, it's amazing. We had a hundred. Now we have like twelve. No, I'm just kidding. Because my slide whistle. <laughs> I'm kidding. Just kidding. All right, go ahead and read. Okay. What did what did Soph have to say? Come on. Come closer. Well, they don't have to be closer. But, but the light's better. I mean, really. Yeah. Come on. Okay. Um, okay, so this was a message from Soph. She wanted me to share with all of you guys. She has been working at the barn. She's been there six days a week, busting her butt. She's earning her own rides now. So um, if you could see that in our backyard, uh, that is, well, I don't think you can see her right now. She could be leading a horse out because she just told me she's helping turn the horses out. But she did want to make sure to express her gratitude to all of you. And I thought this was super sweet. Um, she said, first of all, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for a great quarantine. Thank you for being awesome. Thank you for my birthday presents. Thank you for making 2020 super awesome. And thank you for being amazing fans of my dad and mom. Thank you for sharing your drawings and being brave enough to share them with the rest of the Drawn to Fantasy fans. I'm so glad that we got to have this experience of getting to know you all and getting to see all of your wonderful work. I always look forward to coming downstairs to see my dad drawing and hearing all of your wonderful comments. So I hope to see you all soon. And remember, never abandon imagination. Dang. Isn't that so sweet? That's amazing. She wrote that herself? She wrote that herself. Wow. So. I just thought she was on YouTube the whole time. <laughs> When no. she was up in her room. There no, she is. She, she was more... not. She, she wanted to thank everybody for all of their amazing gifts and um, all of your thoughtful, kind words and cards and all of the cool stuff. It was You guys just showered her. We were overwhelmed. We, we, were, we were. We were. And uh, thank you guys. So let's so pay it forward, Ange. Who's, so who's going to get the... Uh, who's going to get the junk? I don't even have the list, So which means... Oh, I you, can grab the... You know what? Don't grab the list. You might have a chance of winning... Oh, it's double or uh, double double pot? Uh, that's what I think we should do. It's called Double Junkers here today, Friday, because oh we're and crazy. I've been looking at comments. Um, I'm going to... Oh, okay. I see a name I'm not familiar with. That sounds good. I'm going to... Um, oh, I see... Oh, gosh. Who am I... Oh, Who's okay. getting it? All right. I don't think... There we go. Right there. What do you think? Sure, go for okay, it. Okay, I'm going to... Is it gonna, a familiar name? Like you've seen this name before on it? I don't know it? if I've seen this na name a whole lot before. Okay, um, but go for it. But I'm going to go for it. Today's winner of the junk pot is... <laughs> Kathy Blacker! Kathy Blacker <laughs> is the winner Blacker. of today's junk pot. Kathy, if you can send me a direct message with your mailing address, all these scribbly sketches... Will be folded up, shoved in an envelope, and sent your way. How's that sound? Mm -hmm. You can get a whopping uh, two or three dollars on eBay for those, just depending on how you want to do that. Make that happen. Um, in the meantime, if you uh, have won the junk pot or you haven't won the junk pot, I will be posting. Kathy, let us. Did you win before? I don't think you did. I have a slightly photographic memory. Just saying, I don't think you're on the list. So. It doesn't sound familiar to me. Okay. Um, I do. There are some Kathys. Yes, Kathy Bonnell. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm thinking, and I what I'm thinking is, uh, Kathy, it doesn't matter. It's Kathy Blackers now. Yeah, just In the meantime, I will send you, uh, or I'm sorry, Emily C. Martin's going to send you the links. You can download your very own copy for free of the Drawn to Fantasy sketchbook to celebrate uh, this moment in time where we all spent together virtually. Think of it as a uh, concert program, man. It's kind of like a tour program. Of, I feel uh, like that. I think it's a, a great show. souvenir. Yep, so we're gonna, you'll be able to download that for free. Uh, lots of drawings, lots of comments that we made together. We made it together, and uh, I suspect there may be a volume two of this that may come out in the fall, depending on how things are going. Um, Thanks for being here today, Ange. Yeah, you got... Oh, me? Yeah, of course. Oh, I thought you were going to thank everybody else. I was going to Oh, say... forget them. Just talking about you. Just you. Thank you for being there. Aww. I love you. Love you too, honey. Oh, Maybe... Pippin loves me too. He's starting to hump my leg. Oh, <laughs> Pippi. As soon um, as there's any affection in this house, Pippin comes around, let me tell you. He does. You. Guys, I want you guys to be safe, be healthy, hang in there, wear a mask. Put yeah, on a mask. Seriously. Just put on a mask. It's not that big. We're gonna of a deal. tell you and we're gonna be pretty firm about this. Just wear a mask. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Social distance. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Never abandon imagination. All those things. Imagine our lives without the coronavirus. It'll be here. Can It'll be here. It'll be here. Don't worry. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. It was good to see you all again. <laughs> Pippin's also happy, and we'll see you soon. Thank you guys. It was awesome. Hanging, we missed you. Pippin's missed you too. You guys are awesome.